Hey, welcome to the Gadget Spot. Hi, guys. Hey. Yeah. Here we are. Good to be here. This is our fourth episode. Good to be back. Wow, we're practically veterans at this now. Four times. Four times. Let's introduce the panelists. We got over here, Owen. Hey there. I'm Owen. I like gadgets and stuff. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, TechnoOwen. And uh, yeah. And you tweeted I, once, twice? I've tweeted a couple times. Last few weeks? Yeah. Whoa. Yep, I did. Yeah. I changed some stuff too, so you can see pictures of me now. It's not just an egg. And they weren't just generic tweets? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, and you really should see these pictures. It's they are good. Fantastic. Wow. I tweeted stuff. All right. Yep. And over here we have Jaron. I'm Jaron. Uh, Twitter at Jaron. And that's it. That's all I got. I'm nice. done. Signing Succinct. off. I like that. And I am the driver of the podcast, Tony, Quad T, Two Tall Tony, Triple T, whatever you want to call me. My Twitter account is at Quad T Tony. And we also have something new as well. Tell us about it, Jaron. We got uh, an email address. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to 1995, everybody. Gmail. Yeah. Yeah. So email us, and if you're lucky, or if we're lucky to get an email, (laughs) we'll probably read it. Because we like to read things. Heck yeah, we do. So the uh, Gmail uh, address, email Gmail, <laughs> you didn't say it yet. The Gadget Spot Cast. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. The Gadget Spot Cast. There. Good one. That's a very good one. Check it out. Email us. Tell us things you want changed or if we're doing a good job or if you have any maybe things you want us to talk about, whatever. It's on our show description, so you can find it there as well. Or you can just message us on message either of us, any three of us on Twitter as well, instant message, whatever, oh, personal yeah. message. So we're there. All right, what do we got this week? We got a whole some, bunch of we stuff. Got, we got some good stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's happened in the last few weeks. Yeah, MWC was one of the biggest. It was, you know, it was one of the biggest, but it felt like one of the tamest as well. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's just the maturity of the smartphone market now or i think that plays a huge part actually yeah it the phones they look great they look awesome they're just not as exciting anymore yeah they're not really wowing everybody like they used to like magic yeah yeah and and all the major brands they all put out great phones and at this point it's like choose any one of those and you'll probably be good except for sony (laughs) (laughs) sony tries so hard except for when they don't yeah, so <laughs> because that's what it felt like this time. <laughs> so Sony released a new phone called the Xperia X Performance, and I have no idea what they're doing. So their old smartphone line, the Z series, that's uh, their flagship line, the yeah, Z series. But they said that this new line is their new flagship line. Oh, they said I didn't know they said yeah, that. They said they might do one more Z series in the summer, but that's it. Oh, and so the X Performance isn't even as Except for the processor, isn't even as good as the phone they put out last year, the Z5. Yeah, that's uh, underwhelming. They went to from say a, the least. Yeah, they went from a 4K screen to a 1080p screen. And granted, I, I that doesn't bother me because once you get to so many pixels, it doesn't really matter anymore. But the camera stayed the same, and eh, it was kind of underwhelming for Sony. Well, and they had three versions of it too, right? Oh yeah. They had a crappy version, an okay version, and their their best version, which. The only difference between the crappy version and the, or I mean, the medium version and the best version was the processor and the RAM, right? Yeah. If I remember correctly. Um, that was kind of, un- is it waterproof still? Uh, I believe it is. Uh, I can't remember. I, I didn't notice, but Sony's phones have been waterproof for years, so I, I, I'm i presuming It would be waterproof. ridiculous if they took that away, too. Yeah, the the biggest surprise was LG, the G5. Now, that phone actually kind of looks a little bit interesting. Yeah, a little bit uh, modular. Yeah, so they have a little compartment on the bottom. You can open it up and take things out. You can take the battery out, put in a new one. Uh, you can put on a camera hump if you want it. Yeah. If you like those lovely lady camera humps. Who doesn't? Yeah. So does uh, that, like, leave open, like, modular where you can upgrade it to dude is kind of what like, they were saying that's what yeah. we, i don't know about upgrade but but uh, accessories peripherals yeah, okay. yeah like better camera right like when, yeah. when it's in the future when a new camera comes out you can throw the new camera in I, I would hope so but it, it's not looking like it's the case so those accessories which they call friends 
Not my idea. <laughs> um, they're not too interesting at this point. So, Come like, your friend. So the camera accessory is just pretty much a hump, so you can hold it better. It has a slightly bigger battery. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a camera button, but it doesn't upgrade like the camera. Wait, at it all. doesn't give it's it a just, new. It's not a new no, lens or no, sensor or anything. No. Is it ergonomic. Yeah, it's just ergonomics and more oh. battery life. Oh. Yeah, and then they have a DAC. A DAC. A DAC for your better tunage for your for you auto audio files out there yeah. um now I, I don't believe in that so that accessory doesn't you don't interest in, me you don't believe in audio i don't believe in audio files what yeah mp3 is an audio file <laughs> whoa <laughs> wow i believe in Zing. those okay <laughs> and then they have a bunch of these other weird accessories one can like control a drone or something but you yeah i saw that one do that with your smartphone anyway I don't know. I think I think that move would be a great move for the cell phone market if like became modular and you yeah, could, well, it would be cool if they I actually th- had cool modules in it. That would break the break the model, right? Well, that's like, that's what uh, Google's Project Aria is. Yeah, right. And if that will ever come to market, exactly. Come At on, this point, Google. it's still kind of prototype vaporware, but. But I know Google's listening, and I would <laughs> like to make an official request to have that sped up. I think so. that's gonna. Yeah, I think they're going to now. That's gonna create some waves uh, in the industry, right there. <laughs> Whoa! They just <laughs> guys. Owen, did you hear Owen? He did said you? we just speed this yep. up. Yep. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> I'm respected. Yeah, I'm known in some circles in this the in the in Google the, in circles. the seedy underbelly of the yeah. tech world. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> so other than the modules, the LG G5 looks actually pretty sweet. So for the first time ever, they finally have an all metal construction. And they're like one of the only manufacturers with an all metal construction with a replaceable battery. So I that's that's they, pretty cool. I think they are the only manufacturer that has that. I cannot think of a single other one that does. You hear you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. The only one. <laughs> the LG G five. And it has great internals, has the new Snapdragon eight twenty, like all the other major phones now, which looks like a really, really good chip. It does. Especially compared to the 810, which but, was a terrible hey. disappointment. Qualcomm's finally going back to their custom, uh, what is it? Is not custom architecture, but custom uh, cores. Yeah. For their for their uh, mobile chips. I have the 810. Yeah, your your uh, your Nexus 6P has the 810. <laughs> yeah, the 810. The 810 was a was a loser of of a chip. It was definitely the uh, Owen of this group. Uh, oh. Right man yeah that hurt a little i mean i'm well, okay but. that's why he has the phone with that chip exactly okay. that's, that's okay. why you're the own of this group i thought that this was my forever phone <laughs> <laughs> but it's not now i know there's an 820 i have to go get a new one <laughs> i'm gonna have to break this screen and have to go get a new one so the the 810 in your phone is like the second or third version of the 810 that Qualcomm put out. Is that better? That's it's be- it's better it's, for that, sure. Yeah, it it doesn't better. throttle it nearly as much as the okay. first gen 810 did. Gonna, I, that I, thing I was garbage. I'll hold off on cracking the screen. Yeah, you don't need to break phone. it just yet. It'll work for a while. Okay. Yeah, a few months. At least a couple months. Hey, yeah. it's been a couple months. So w- one, one interesting uh, uh, trend, this MWC, are the screens. So... For the past few years, screen resolutions have jumped pretty much every year, but this right. year they pretty much stayed the same. Well, they're finally realizing when you're on a five inch screen, you can only get such small pixels where it doesn't make a difference at, yeah, at finally. a further point. Finally, they realize this. Um, I th- I'm personally fine with a 1080p yeah. screen on a five inch phone. On five inch, yeah. But, you know, 2650 by 1440 is pretty awesome. I will say, though, having. More than 1080p is good if you want to use it for like Google Cardboard or any, yeah. any oh, VR yeah. type of stuff because yeah. you can definitely see pixels when you're using a 1080p phone. Well, it definitely has its, VR. its place, but I, I'm I'm not at all sold on 4K on a five and a half inch screen. Yeah, that's just a waste Sony of wasn't battery. either. Yeah, they went backwards. Yeah, so that that was the G5. It it looked pretty genuinely interesting. Um, the Galaxy S7 looks like a solid phone. They have pretty much the same enclosures last year it's all metal construction um but they brought back the micro sd card and the waterproof and the waterproofing so IR, that's, that's ir blaster N- nobody cares about the ir uh, blaster i Owen. have needed to use my ir blaster multiple times since i got How my many new phone times the, <laughs> the ir blaster is definitely the owen part of the phone <laughs> <laughs> which everybody wants a little of <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone wants a little everybody owen everybody wants a little owen you don't realize you want it <laughs> until you don't that, have it anymore exactly like <laughs> 
IR blaster. Mm. Come on. Turning off stuff and on stuff with light. <laughs> Infrared. Light. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about the IR blaster, but uh, the, the I think it's safe to assume it's not there. Look, yeah. I, I guarantee it'll be back, just like I did with the SD uh, card. Yeah, <laughs> check uh, our last episode uh, or so. Uh, I think I said that that would happen. <laughs> I predicted it. But the, the S7, they they have an 820 chip, just like all the other major phones. Uh, but this time, the S7 Edge, it's not the same size as the normal S7. Yeah. They made it bigger. It almost looks like they might take the Edge out of the Note option. Yeah, so it's. It kind of rests between the Note and the S7 now, so yeah. Hmm. And, Which that's fine. I yeah. mean, you don't need two. I don't. I don't know. I guess you have two versions of the Galaxy, basically. But yeah, you don't need two. They don't need two versions of the Edge. There's so many different phone models now. It's yeah. Kinda, like, like you said at the beginning, it's kind of unmagical now. Yeah, it gets, yeah. it's to the point now where saturated. It, yeah, you know? yeah. There's so many good options out there. There's just like eh. When yes. it, eh, what do you want? The is market running, is, is dripping more, with good options. And it runs Marshmallow, I take it. Like, yeah. yeah the new version yeah, of Android. All, all, all so it's like, yeah. The coolest feature of the S7, though, the other phones don't have, it's this, they have like this automatic spam filtering feature built in. So that they like partnered with white pages or whatever. And so it'll automatically tag spam calls. It will automatically give you caller ID for like businesses and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is. I don't know why no one has done it before. Seems like an exploit that somebody should look into <laughs> and hack Secu- your phone and security guy Owen yeah, over yeah. here. Let's let's take apart that and misuse it. Yeah. And then the last major manufacturer, Xiaomi. I don't know if I said that right. I don't think that's how you say it. No, I'm pretty sure it is. I, I know I said it right. I think it's Xiaomi. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anyway, they they put out a new phone, the Mi Five, My Five. It looks pretty good. M I Space Five. Mi Five. Mission Impossible Five. Nope. But it's it has a 1080p screen. Uh, it has a Snapdragon 820. It looks really really good, just like all the other major phones out there. But the differentiating factor is it's cheap. It costs like 400 yeah. bucks. For, Top shelf parts. Yeah. At a mid-range price, assuming upper it, mid-range, yeah, assuming you can actually buy one because they don't really sell much in the United States. Yeah, they're much m- mostly in Asia, Asian market, mm. but it does look pretty cool. You, you got a few manufacturers that are breaking in from Asia a little bit. Uh, hopefully, Xiaomi, Xiaomi, Xiaomi is gonna is gonna get in here. Huawei's starting to break into. Uh, and thank you for saying it correctly. Yeah, you're welcome. It's not Huawei. It's Huawei. Huawei is is breaking into the North American marketplace as well as uh, OnePlus is an Asian manufacturer. Oh. They're a subsidiary subsidiary of Oppo. Right, which is Asian. Yeah. A Chinese market, a Chinese manufacturer. So. And Oppo actually announced something interesting. They they have quick charging. But it's a lot cooler than all the other quick charging. Apparently, it takes 15 minutes to get your phone from completely empty to completely full. Wow. Ooh. Does it use leaves or <laughs> pollen? Uh, actually, green apples. Okay. I'm up for that then. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, the speaking of apples, that's the latest segment of BS, the, the BS? battery segment. Let's hear about the BS. So I'm I'm not going to spend much time on this because I don't understand any of the chemistry or anything like that. But apparently they're using apples for batteries now. Why? I don't know. (laughs) Cheap source of carbon. They like dry them out, use the carbon, make sodium ion batteries, which are supposedly safer than lithium ion. So, okay, that sounds neat. But why apples, I wonder? I don't know. Because they're so geometric that you can stack them really close, right? You're probably right. I think (laughs) that that sounds right. Yeah. Uh Okay. I knew it. I knew it. So what do we need to do to get Owen off this podcast? Look, guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's a valued member of this podcast. <laughs> he sure is. I'm just kidding. Um, oh, now he seems sad. <laughs> they don't like my IR blaster. They make fun of my Apple comments. We love Owen. <laughs> no, it's, fi- it's fine, guys. It's fine. It's totally fine. And speaking of Owen, he has a new review for us. Yes. I, I, I understand you have a new edition. I do have a new edition of... What? A child? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Your other oh. one's got eight, oh, right. eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. So Ooh. have you had this one long enough to uh, mm, nope. to review yet? No. Nope. Still nope. under scrutiny. Still under review. Okay. Because if it got a review right now, she would not be doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> have you filmed a hands-on? Uh, but... <laughs> Um, I'm still investing. I, I feel like I need hands to, on baby. I have to in order to, in order to fully review this this child. Um, I need to 
invest more time. And so once the time quota, which she is currently eating up at, a, at an exorbitant rate, mm-hmm. she is absorbing my sleep. Um, I'll, I'll have a better review by, by by the next podcast. I will definitely have a review. She's scoring. She's trending very well. Oh, that's great. But um, that's because right now I'm being fueled by Red Bull and Mountain Dew and anything else that will make my heart feel like it's trying to jump out of his chest. So so does she require more time than The Witcher or Dragon Age Inquisition? Um, he hasn't played any of those. Both of those games I have not played, but I will say that my Halo playing has been way down. Uh-oh. But my Clash of Clans playing has been way up. Uh-oh. And recently way down. <laughs> and recently way <laughs> Because down. of the new Clash Royale. Have you played that game? No. Oh, man. Any okay. good? It's a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. I mean, Better. it's still play for free, pay to win, and they yeah. have a very unique mechanics for doing it. But, um, I mean, ununique. It's it's very it's very standard model <laughs> where you buy gems and accelerate the time. But so just like clash. Oh Clans. yeah, totally. Okay. Supercell just smashed out another one, but it's more action. It's, yeah. it's three minutes of pure action where you are almost like castled, like a tower defense type of thing where you have cards and play them with elixir and all this stuff. So hmm. it's a lot of fun. It's, it's not as, it's not as easy to be like, okay, one second, honey, I'm just going to, mine my gold and then you can turn it off it's like i need three dedic you'll need three dedicated minutes per match otherwise you three dedicated minutes yeah, per match yeah so Ooh. It, it's become rough so yeah you turn it off and you just get squashed how's so. your how's your pocket morty's going pocket morty's is good i mean i'm yes. i've i've been playing that i've i think my my standard morty is up to 30 now nice so you're catching up with yeah, me he's doing good. i haven't played it very much my standard morty's only at like 35 yeah, so i've only of, gone up a couple levels i had a lot of time in the hospital recently yeah, with uh, with the baby being in there so we were in there for a week so Ooh, that was, a long time yeah it was good just under a week i should say so. well congratulations hey, on thank the you very much new addition yeah i'm sure she's actually going to raise the entire average of the whole brood oh good yeah so i think i'll actually be able to move them up to like i think she's going to actually score them the extra two points and then we don't have to talk about this anymore we could just say that it's a 10 out of 10 and then you guys don't have to bring up my review of my children anymore which makes me feel really 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 bad <laughs> Owen's a great father, everybody. <laughs> We're just giving him crap. Because that's what we do. All right. So um, I had something to review, I think. No. Oh, actually, I do have something to review. No, it's not really a full review. But uh, my my uncle stayed the weekend with us and brought his braggy dashes. Ooh. Dash. Braggy dash. Ooh. Let me tell you. Uh, really neat concept. Really neat idea. They failed. Ooh, really? As far as the ear tips go, though. Oh, no. these are the wireless headphones for those of you. Yeah, the the truly wireless, wireless yeah. Bluetooth. There's no cord that goes in between them or anything. Um, he brought the box and everything, so I got to play with the like the manual that it comes with, and and it's. I mean, presentation was top notch. I'd say even better than Apple presentation, honestly. Wow. Or at least as good. But so I tried it out and I and he uses a different ear tip size than I do. So it's not like we were sharing ear tips or anything. That'd be gross. But uh, you like it. OK, I do. <laughs> no, the uh, so the only ear tip difference is it, it changes the thickness of the device itself. So it changes how firm it stays in your ear. The actual part that goes inside your ear canal is the same on every size. Hmm. And they're all very small. So I put it in and, and chose the largest tip thinking, oh, this should work for me and shoved it in there into my ears and turned the music up. I could barely hear the music because there was my ear canals, full disclosure, are very large. <laughs> Just like every other feature on his large. Body. Well, there you go. <laughs> and so uh, like whenever I use headphone or earbuds i have to get the biggest ones and there's even some companies out there that come with their earbuds and they're still not big enough i order another brand called compli and their memory foam ear plug ear ear uh, bud replacements fantastic stuff but so these ones I, pu- I put it in and i turned the music up all the way and it was just sounded it sounded like it was coming out of my phone in my hand oh. i made sure I, I i pulled one out and put my phone up to my ear to make sure that that wasn't the case no it wasn't the case but i couldn't i couldn't hear Hardly anything. And were they improved if you like put your finger up there? No, and... I I tried pushing it in harder. 
I tried wiggling it around and nothing. And what does your uncle say about them? Well, they fit in his ears fine, and he loves them. He says they sound fantastic. Um, He's used the heart rate monitor stuff, and he says that works really good. Hmm. Um, So, I mean, basically, the only problem I can see with them between his experience and my experience is just I have really big ear canals, and Hmm. they didn't plan for that, apparently. So I'm sure they'll release an accessory or something, that accessory ear tips, but... Right. As it stands right now, if you have big ear canals, and you know if you do, you know if you, <laughs> you do. know you, you do. know, uh, don't don't spend the money on the braggy dash yet because it won't fit good. Hmm. And hopefully, they have a good return policy. If they don't, yeah, fit. if if you did and find out they don't fit in your head very good, so that is how I feel about that. So much potential not fitting on Tony. Um, this is a topic that I think all of us are interested in. Xbox being upgraded similar to PCs. Did you guys read this in the news the last week or two? No, I'm just actually seeing this here. Understandable. You were very busy last week. So Microsoft hasn't come out and said this is the plan for sure, but they're definitely hinting towards it. The one thing they did come out and say for sure 100% is they want a lot more cross-platform gaming between the Xbox and the PC, the Windows 10 platform. And they've already shown that they're dedicated, right now anyway, towards that with Tomb Raider, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider being available on uh, both Xbox One and PC. And then uh, they also did that with Gears of War remake, available on both from day one, I believe. Um, And then Quantum Break is coming out. Uh, in a couple, I think two months or a month and a half or something like that. And that's going to be on both released simultaneously. So they're they're really pushing towards being able to play on either or. With the same game, like with the same, same uh, levels? Like like you can just say, oh, I'm going to go play on my PC because so, I'm family watching a movie. I don't know if they're going to go that far. With Quantum Break, though, it is you buy one, you get it for the other. Oh, okay. Uh, at least if you buy the Xbox, you get it for PC. Yeah, it would be cool if they did like cross saving. Cross saving would be way cool, right? like Sony does with between Vita and PS4 for the two games that they have it for. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so the one issue right now, though, is uh, for this to for this to work, you have to use the new Windows uh, 10 marketplace to buy the games. Mm-hmm. You can't get it through Steam or anything like that. And they haven't quite worked out all the bugs on on that universal code that they want you. They want the developers to use to make these games. So some of the games don't support SLI if you have two graphics cards. Uh, it does this thing, too, where it forces it to launch. Uh, I think it was Tomb Raider's having this issue. It forces the game to launch in a windowed, uh, a full-screen windowed mode. Mm-hmm. So it's not an actual full-screen. It's no, full-screen, but it has borderless oh, window. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm trying to say, borderless window. And that forces VSync at 60 frames per second. So if you have a powerful card and you want to run it faster than 60 frames per second on like a 144 hertz monitor or something like that, you can't. Yeah, that limits what, it. That's what I was going to say. Can they really do this and have it hardware is why you PC game, right? Yeah. Like that's and so why, that's why you do it. Either they launched this prematurely or they didn't think people would notice or they just knew going into it that they were going to have to make changes. I don't know which one of those three it was, but They've ruffled a lot of feathers on the PC gaming side because that's that's frustrating when you spend, you know, three grand on a PC and you have these games that you want to play on there, but you can't get higher than 60 frames per second if right. that's your thing. Or or if you have two, two graphics cards, you can't get the SLI going. Now, we know that for sure it is an issue with the platform that it's developed on because when you buy it for Steam and it uses the old Windows platform to develop on, it works fine with SLI. Hmm. So they got things to, to work out there. Yeah. But the the concept of being able to upgrade your Xbox itself, it's uh it's not a new one. I mean, console manufacturers in the past have tried to upgrade their consoles mid cycle. A lot of a lot of times. Sega, Sega Genesis with their thirty two X and yep. the Sega C D. Yep. That that was a bomb. Uh Nintendo sixty four did it with their VRAM expansion. Another right. bomb. Another four four right. megabytes of 
of RAM for your right. But then they're just N64. competing with the same market. Like the same thing as PC did. Like why not just go buy a PC with Windows 10? Like yeah. What is an Xbox One if well, you've got a Bluetooth? Supposedly controller? a lot cheaper though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. If, and if if you want to go big, you can build a budget PC that'll play games for four or five hundred bucks, but you're not going to max the graphics out or anything. No, you know, it kind sure. of defeats the purpose i i love the idea of being able to upgrade your console every two or three years with like a hundred dollar add-on um but if game manufacturers like limit their games to just the add-on then i think it'd be a failure they'd have to maintain compatibility with the old generation for, for sure yeah and it breaks that model of new release next gen what's the new th- next thing and yeah. you know just like we do with cell phones and whatever you i know? mean the best case scenario i could think of is if they come out with a new box a new total box every two to three years, but just make sure that your old games will play on it. Backwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility. I hate that about the industry right now that they don't do that. See, now the fact that they're that both of the big guys are on x86 architecture means technically they should be able to do backwards compatibility fairly easily, but you're st- you're still talking about a lot of work to have a three year refresh cycle. Yeah, I I. And, it sounds cool. I just don't think they'd be able to do it. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical. Yeah, not for six hundred dollars a box, you know. Yeah. Nobody's gonna be able to do that. Well, I mean, you could, you could easily pay your six hundred bucks, and three years from then they release a new one, and you could sell your other one for probably like three or four hundred bucks, and only be in it two or three hundred bucks for an upgrade. But you could buy a brand new one for three hundred bucks right now. You wouldn't get that much. I well, think, I mean, but, it depends on the, yeah. you know, on how the economics work on it, but. So that's interesting as far as Microsoft's goals. They're flopping around, floundering a little bit on it right now, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, tell us about this smart typewriter, Jerome. It's a typewriter, but it's smart. Whoa! You were telling me about this the other day. Uh, you, you've invested in, in yeah, this. Yeah, actually, it, it's it's a pretty cool product, so... My wife likes to write, um, and so there's definitely a market for this smart typewriter. And, and what it is, is basically just a keyboard with an e-ink screen, and that's it. So it, it's a nice keyboard. It's a mechanical keyboard. looks like an old vintage typewriter, so it, the styling is really cool. Um, but the batteries last for, for about a month, and it has wireless, so you can connect with um, services like Evernote or Google Drive or Dropbox. And you can sync all of your writing to those services. And does it have a screen at all? It has an e ink screen. Okay. So you can just see what you're typing and, and that's it. And for uh some people out there who, who would think, why would you ever want that? Um I think that, but <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be, you have to be a writer, you know. It's the the fact that you can't get distracted from other things on your computer is a huge deal. It really helps you write things uh with a clearer mind and I don't know. Some people just, you know, like the aesthetic of, of an old typewriter. And uh, so it, it kind of melds the old typewriter with new technology. So it's it's kind of cool. So you got the e-ink screen, but would also type to actual paper if you want it to? No, no. It's just oh, e-ink screen. Okay. That's it. So gotcha. the, no no paper involved. Hmm. Interesting. That's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they're, not they're, really for me, but. No, no. Uh, they're releasing in a few weeks and. Your wife's like, probably pretty excited. Yeah, like Tony said, we invested in it, so hopefully it's a good product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we got the. I did the. Uh, speaking of writing and typing with digital, you yeah. know, or old mer- old meets new, we got the new the scribble pen. You guys ever heard of it? I've scribbled no. with my Have pen you seen, before. So, so it's color matching. It's what's really cool. And in Ooh. the past, color matching has always been a stylus, right? Where it's like it stays. Once you switch it digital, it goes digital. Well, the scribble pen, um, it's really cool because it, it has a sensor and you can actually go check it out. It's a, it's at, uh, the scribble <laughs> Um, but, uh, it, it has a photo sensor that will pick up anything that you hold it up to in like about, it's about three seconds. They say that it, it picks up the color. So that is so if, cool. If you have the coolest part though, is it's not just a stylus. It comes with a stylus. It comes with the app. You know, it comes with all the software part that we've all, we've seen before and other things, but this one also has an ink pen that will mix and spray that color immediately Wow! as you, after you, after you do it. And it's like 32 miles of ink. So not as a, it's not just, I really, I, I didn't, I didn't really find out the prices of how much a cartridge cost to refill, but so you could change the color 
for 30 miles. 32 miles of drawing is what they said. Oh, wait, so once you set the color, though, can you change the color oh, yeah. after that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, that's wild. So, so you can change the color. There's a little quick. You do have, I mean, you do have to clean the tip of the pen because there's Well, obviously. Ink, but they Residual. Got a little, it's really, yeah, it's really quick. It's this little thing. You scrub it off and change your color. You scan. They, in the video, it's really cool. They have scanning all sorts of things, stuff that you would like. I need that green. And for an artist, when, you know, I know a couple artists, but when you're trying to find a, a certain green, trying to mix that with your paints, if you're doing oil paints or whatever, it's really hard. And so a lot of people will stay digital, right? They'll they'll go take a picture of it and then just do an Adobe or whatever. Right. But if you're an artist on a canvas, it's really cool to be able to get that real true color without having to waste all the time um, mixing it, which is really cool. That is awesome. Is this so, a Kickstarter or is this? No, this is a fully, you can buy one today. Yeah, this is this is good to go, the scribble pen. Whoa, wow. whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. It says pre-order now. Oh, maybe it's not. That is not buy one today. Oh, yeah, it's not. I thought it was, I, the one I saw was not but that way. But it's not way. Kickstarter. It's not Kickstarter. Yeah, it's not being, it's not on Kickstarter. This is not part of our kick it or keep it uh, area, but Hmm. But uh, it's really cool also, so they, they have many applications for it. They've got a stylus, which you can use as well, which lets you do it on the on the tablet, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool because you can, like, go up to your house if you're doing paints and stuff, and you can pick out your palette, your colors, and then, like, it will – you just – hold the stylus up to the can of paint it'll it'll build the palette for you and you could just like mix and match on the on the app and it's really cool so that's crazy yeah it's like a it's actually a pretty cool little thing that they've i mean i haven't obviously if it's in pre-order we can't get one and play with one now but the does the, it say how much it'd be uh no i don't think it does mm -hmm. uh i wish i knew how to art you know i as well I find it very intriguing, but I have zero skill. I, st I stick left. figure sometimes. I'm I'm way too far to one side of my brain or the yeah. other for for that. If to, I could art, work. I could totally, I would totally buy this. Indeed. So. All right, we have time for two more semi quick stories. Okay. I really want you to talk about this iris chip deep learning. Okay, so AI, right? AI has kind of been killed in the industry Stephen Hawking Elon Musk has it been killed no it hasn't been killed hasn't been but killed. it's there's He's a, a there's a of, campaign against got, it right we got a bunch of wieners who are afraid of it yeah that's true so uh so iris I talked about this I talked about this last time a little bit told, told you we'd come back to it so iris is the new deep learning which is just AI rebranded so uh it's they call it deep learning now it's basically neural nets where computers we we constantly want computers to be able to do human stuff right well like if you can imagine the complexity of moving your hand and picking up a glass of water like yeah it's millions and billions and billions of calculations in a half a second jaren you just did it he just did it i did he Amazing. just he just blew our minds with that so we've always as a race you know as, as people we've always wanted to try and make that yeah. and it's our it's in our nature to create like that and uh, so AI kind of got a bad rap. They think it's the end of the world, a lot of people. But deep learning is the new branding. And uh, so I was kind of looking into AI, and I found this iris chip. And it's a, it's a pretty amazing little chip. I know I say little. It's about palm size, they say. But um, we have – so – I found I found an article that actually they dug into some of the specs on it, which was pretty cool. It's got 168 cores with all with their own memory banks. Oh, and wow. And so they compile and compress the data and share it between each other without having to go online anywhere. So they do all the AI and the algorithms, all the algorithms, sorry, uh, on the chip itself. And so that's a pretty impressive thing because it doesn't have to spend energy communicating right. out to some other huge big blue somewhere, you know some other big supercomputer. Um, but uh, so it's it's energy friendly or it's supposed to be. It has the potential to be. Obviously, it's not. It's being developed by out at MIT right now, but um, DARPA is funding it. So Ooh, it makes me good. a little, I'm like, hello, Skynet. Yeah, exactly. So, that's but, exactly what but I But I think of. we can learn from, you know, I think we can learn from the mistakes of, mistakes of Terminator and not let things get out of control. Let's just not let them time travel. And I think, We'll be okay. There's nothing you can do to stop us from time travel. Um, I'm a neural network processor, a learning computer. But as so, it's it's really cool because it will do things like the image processing and voice recognition. In fact, Google's already using it in a lot of their devices. They actually mm -hmm. came up with one called Tensor. Uh, it's called TensorFlow, and um, it's actually 
that they use that for their voice recognition for their google goggles and a lot of their mm, a lot of their learning yeah. stuff the problem with most ai though is that it relies on the gpu and the in the on the chip to do this it needs its own cpu right whereas iris is planning to be it, it's right now it's too big for a cell phone right but a tablet for sure at this point it could probably fit inside and uh you know that being 10 times more powerful and efficient than a gpu right now it could does pop. it say what gpu it's referring to because there's a NVIDIA. lot of different... it, was, it referenced an nvidia chip do you so know which one though uh no it didn't say on the site which oh, which bummer. site which one they were actually comparing it to i'm sure that because nvidia has you know Every year they have ten different varieties I assume, of I chips assume they come, were, of GPUs come out, and I'm assuming they did it for one that's probably compatible into a tablet or a phone. So probably not a PC, you know, one of the big boys. Right. But but, uh, but yeah, so they're using it. I mean, obviously they're going to start they for facial recognition and stuff like that with drone strikes and stuff. They're already that's putting, crazy putting in it for the for military use and and obviously DARPA funding it and the government being behind it. They're going to get their military use out of it first, but um, the cool thing, as I was looking in TensorFlow, uh, which is Google's AI, it kind of got scrapped a little bit, but not really. It just got opened up to open source. So they just mm. released the code and said, do whatever you want with it. And uh, That's like right before you scrap something. Yeah, exactly. You're <laughs> we like, well. Ma- we could make anything fun out of this. What, can you guys do anything yeah. with this? So, so TensorFlow, uh, go look that up. It's actually really cool. Actually, go and look up the Iris 2 as, as well. Um, it's, you know, the... With with where with where we're going with smartphones and devices, that's kind of what we want. As a you know, we want offline. Oh yeah, capabilities like that. When we go offline, when we go out hiking and stuff like that, we would like to identify a leaf and you know, or a bug or whatever. Like yeah, using the camera or whatever. So it you know we're we're constantly we want to be connected, but offline is important too. That's why we kind of have our you know games and stuff like that that we play offline that don't need connection and everything. So. Um, but it's really cool as I, actually, as I was learning about TensorFlow, um, I came across, I came across, uh, Google's deep learning mm-hmm. or deep, deep dream. Um, oh, those pictures. Yeah. Those weird pictures. Yeah. So have you done that? I, I've I, looked at a bunch of them, but so I haven't. my problem is this, I uploaded some random picture I found on the internet and I went through it and now I'm addicted like on pocket Morty's or Pokemon or something because <laughs> I found out that there's something called a rare Oh, deep you can, dream you card, can get different deep, levels. deep dream. Yeah. So as you, if you upload this, I go, go check it out. It's uh, Google. You just go to Google and type in the deep dream uh, thing and you'll find, you'll find the, the thing I, in order to go deeper, which is what you have to do to level up, you have to log in and create an account, which I just use my Google account, Google account. But, um, so every time you click go deeper, uh, it, the the AI takes a picture and it starts to tweak it until it finds a pattern it knows and then it uses that hmm. and as it goes deeper it gets more random and I eventually believe that it'll just be one side of the picture will be black and one side of the picture will be white <laughs> because I, I believe computers are still so symmetrical that eventually it'll either turn into fractal or black and white on one it's side either on or it's off one or zero one or right? zero machine language so. Uh, but no, it's really cool. I got to, I got to level 4.1 before I was like, I can't take anymore. <laughs> I wanted a rare, I, now I have, now I feel compelled to upgrade my deep dream picture to a level six because it, it then becomes known as a rare deep dream picture. That's how they get you. And so every iteration you do, you hit go deeper and it will up your, your drink, your level. Well, then they start breaking it down into one of nine so you have to do nine iterations then it will go up a level oh and uh, and that's when i kind of gave up i have no idea what you're talking about i have no ambition i'm gonna try it out it looks cool. yeah i'm gonna try and get a level six i don't know what for but i want a level six i have i have to do it now i have a level 35 pocket morty mm -hmm, yep exactly (laughs) i'm programmed to be this way sorry (laughs) i have to do it nice so yeah so that was that was my uh, my iris chip stuff. Check that iris chip stuff out. You can actually go look on. Uh, there's a couple websites right on MIT's website where they talk about it. But I think AI is like an up and coming. Really, oh, it's definitely. It doesn't matter who says it's yep. stupid or scary or whatever. It's going to happen. Yeah, progress. There's, it's going to be just because it needs to be done. Exactly. Just because it can be done. It's it the will same be done. same reason people climb Mount Everest. Yep. There's no need to climb Mount Everest, but it can be done. But it can be done, Therefore, and people are going to do it. Yep. So that'll be cool. All right. One more. We got a kick it or keep it from Jaron. He's, he's saying he has a good one. Yeah. So it's it's a cable on Kickstarter. 
kick it. And <laughs> <laughs> all right, segment over. Wow, yeah, that was real quick. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a Frankenstein cable. So it's a lightning cable, which is you know Apple's Apple. proprietary junk, right? And a micro USB cable in one. So it's not two separate connectors. It's one connector that's both lightning and micro USB. How does that work? So apparently, those one, aren't even like similar. I know they're not even similar similarly shaped. Yeah. It's it's, it's the, crazy. So it's oh. it's called the LM cable, the world's first iOS and Android common connector. So basically, one side you can plug it into to an iPhone, you flip it around, and then suddenly you can plug it in to an Android. Phone. So it completely ruins the whole point of USB C, uh, and well, except USB C is like five kajillion times faster than yeah. Well, no, I'm saying one of the uh, yeah. Okay, there is that, but but obviously the the point of the USB C and Lightning is you can. Plug it in upside down or right side up. Universal, it right? It, it. But on this one, you have to plug yeah. it in a certain direction. Yeah, but right if you have backwards. multiple phones or multiple devices and you're going on vacation, you only need to carry one cable with or you. Or you mean if your wife forgets her power cable and you don't because you never do, right? It and sounds like it's happened before. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sounding familiar. No, she actually never has. I'm gonna vote kick it though. I don't like it. It removes the universability of yep. like flipping around. We all know the USB super mode, right? Like you know that. USB cables, until you look at them, they they remain in super mode. Have you ever tried to put a USB cable into a computer without looking at it? You can't. You can't do it. It's impossible. It doesn't matter which way you turn it. It, it won't fit. It, until you actually look at it, then the mode is set, and you will be able to plug it into your device. <laughs> that is the way it goes. That's the beauty so of the USB. Yep. Yep. I was a big fan of the universal dire- omnidirectional cable. Oh yeah, that they switched to with the C. It's on really the, nice on the Nexus P. So and all the new phones at MWC have it except for the Galaxy S7. Yeah, they stuck with they old. stuck with micro. Yep, yep. they did. Ew. It's weird. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We'll see you in uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. And uh, yeah, you guys out there, if you have suggestions or gadgets that you want to, I got a couple suggestions actually from my brother-in-law Josh, if he's listening. But, uh, yeah, so if you guys have suggestions, email them to our email address, which is thegadgetspotcast at gmail.com. Bam. Bam. All right, guys. Adios. See ya. All right.